Well, hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today I've got a special treat. I'm gonna take those leftover braised lamb shanks and turn it into a delicious shepherd's pie. I made it extra intentionally because we hadn't had shepherd's pie in a long time and I wanted to make sure that while my husband was home this weekend, I treated him with some of our favorites. So, that being said, if you like this video, I hope I get a thumbs up, share it on your Facebook page, and most of all, go down in the About section below and check out all the links that I've left for you. I've got my Facebook page, go hit like over there and join in on the conversation. I've also got my Wild Tree website where you can go check out all natural organic products, no preservatives ever. And maybe even look into becoming a rep for $49, you get $270 worth of products and uh, you can either start your own business or consume it and it's all edible, all natural, delicious. So come on, let's go make some delicious shepherd's So well, I'm glad you stayed come. so you could see how I dressed that um, slow cooker lamb shank dinner uh, in a different outfit. This is what I'm doing with the leftovers and I did this intentionally because it makes my life a lot easier. Prepping food ahead let you eat healthy without the hassle. So, healthy without the hassle, that's what, the way we like it. I took all the bone, or the meat off of the other shank and the shoulder blade steak and just kind of shredded that up. I strained the mushrooms and the rest of the onion jam because that kind of just breaks down. I've got that into more of a consistent form and then this is the gelatinized, whoops, this is the gelatinized um, broth that was in there. And you can see all that collagen that breaks down from slow cooking the, with the bone in. It makes a fabulous stock. But because this is on the sweet side, I do have uh, uh, some um, organic bouillon, better than bouillon in there to beef it up a little bit, give it a little more savory flavor. We've got some home canned green beans out of my garden. I've got some fresh thyme. And back here I have my um, sunshine potatoes. So we're gonna build us, what do you think? Oh, and I've got some cheese, a shepherd's pie. So it may not be a traditional shepherd's pie, but that's what we're doing tonight. And so I hope it inspires you to stay with me and uh, watch how I get it done. So first thing is we're gonna take this over and turn this into more of a gravy because as soon as you heat this up, that gelatin is gonna turn into All right guys, so now we're over at the stove. I'm gonna go ahead. I don't have any oil down here. I'm gonna try to keep this, you know, as low fat as possible, but we're gonna put this down and remember, remember we have that um, better than bouillon in here, so that's gotta, uh, kind of melt into the mix. So I'm going to get this up to temperature and this might be too much um, but we're going to thicken it with a flour slurry and I've got all-purpose flour with heavy cream so it's going to be delicious. That's why we don't need any additional fat here. So it's got a little bit of fat in the cream or as much as going to be in there. I'm going to do some cracked black pepper and we like pepper so the better than bouillon is low sodium so I don't need to add any salt because we got plenty of salt going on we're just trying to add savory more savory to it and then I'm going to strip off some thyme leaves while this is getting, coming up to temperature I've got this over a medium high heat and Ooh, this is really tender thyme. So if you get some stems in, when the stems are really tender, don't worry about it because they'll break before you get the leaves stripped off. Okay, fresh thyme. Thyme is just delicious in any hearty beef or lamb recipe. As well as... Um, rosemary, all those things are delicious. In fact, I might add a little dried rosemary to the mix because I think that'll actually take it to another level as well. So we'll add just a little bit of dried rosemary, maybe a half a teaspoon, and let that kind of come into the come to the party and. Keep stripping these thyme leaves. 
You probably want a teaspoon of fresh thyme. If it was dry thyme, I would cut that in half because the flavors are concentrated. Mm. I can't wait. We love shepherd's pie no matter how you how you stack it. It doesn't have to be traditional. It can be any way you want to put it together. I believe that that little concoction was exactly what I'm doing. It was created out of leftovers and became a favorite. And I've always made a shepherd's pie after, let's say, um, a fried chicken, mashed potato, and gravy dinner because I always make extra potatoes. If you're going to make you know, mashed potatoes always makes it extra, and then you can do so many things with the leftovers. You can make potato pancakes, you can make pierogies, you can make all kinds of things. So here we've got this. As soon as it comes up to a boil, I'm going to add some of this slurry to thicken it. I don't know if you can see that. And I'll bring you back when I'm doing that because we've got this up to a simmer, and I'm going to let it simmer for just a couple of minutes while I do a couple things. I wanted to talk about when you're changing something from a sweeter dish to a savory dish, the missing components um, are usually an acid of some sort and some heat. And so I'm going to also add just a dash of cayenne. And of course, savory herbs helps. I'm not, I want to tell you it's a pinch. You don't want any background heat, but it, it'll add something with it, without you knowing it. And then I've got some um, red wine vinegar. I'm just going to add a, maybe maybe a teaspoon of that to it. And then before I finish this, give it a nice whisk. I'm going to go ahead now that I feel like the herbs have had a chance to lend some of their flavor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and taste it. In my opinion, any good cook tastes along the way to make sure that their plan is playing out and they don't have something unexpected. So get your spoon in there and you only need a little bit on the end of the spoon. Mm, perfect. Just gives a little acidity and it balances that sweetness from the sugar because there was sugar in that onion jam. So there you go. And I didn't want to go back to the balsamic. I wanted to kind of edge away from that. So the red wine vinegar was really perfect for that. So I'm going to go ahead and thicken this. Bring this up to temp because that cream slurry, and flour, you know, flour slurry is going to um, slow this down a little bit. And we want it I'm going to add just, you know, a couple tablespoons at a time because I don't want it to over thicken. I want it a nice gravy. And as you can see, we're going to get it thick pretty quickly. I just keep whisking and whisking and whisking. And as soon as I got it to thicken, okay, so I'll bring now I've got it to where I want it. I think this is perfect. It's not too thin and it's not too thick. We are ready to start this process of putting this together. And I got you close up so you can see how it goes together. And what I'm going to do is a little bit different than I normally would do. Um, normally I'd put the meat at the bottom, but this time I'm going to put the mushroom mixture. And I'm wearing a glove because I don't want my hands and all this, but I'm putting the mushrooms and the broke down jam, if you will. Um, all the onions that are in that onion jam. Don't want to waste any of that. I'm going to spread that out in a thin layer on the bottom of this casserole dish. And this casserole dish, um, there's a piece of meat right there, uh, is about, I'm going to say 8 by 10. It's, it's not huge. You know, it's actually perfect for two people and then you've got a lunch for the next day. Dinner and lunch, there you go. And then on top of that is where I'm gonna put my meat. So you really have those hearty mushrooms and that was a pound and a half of mushrooms. So that was a lot of mushrooms. And I've got this shredded 
deboned meat off the shank and just a layer of that and so uh, you're not getting tons and tons of meat that you can't really or shouldn't really have. Just a perfect layer right there. Look at that. I, you'd think I planned this or something. <laughs> anyway, okay, so now we've got that. Now I'm going to open my can of green beans and drain off the liquid. I don't want the liquid in there. Actually, I'm going to drain that, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and um, put some gravy down. And I can get rid of my glove. Yay! No glove. Easy cleanup. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and spoon over gravy on top of that. It's going to keep that meat nice and moist. It's going to change, like I said, it's going to change the flavor profile of this. And you want plenty of gravy. Nobody likes shepherd's pie without lots of gravy because you got mashed potatoes on top. And you never know, we might end up using all this. I want to make sure that it goes right in between all the pieces. And I've done shepherd's pie probably every which way but loose. I'll have to bring you along for a few of my ideas on how to do my shepherd's pie. Because like I said, I think shepherd's pie was a, you know, way to use up leftovers. Because some people don't like leftovers at all. And if they see the same thing on their plate, they won't eat it. Which I think is silly because it's usually way better the next day. That's why slow cooking works so well. Because... All the spices have time to get acquainted and get married up. Okay, so I'm just cleaning up my dish because I am picky. So I've got my home canned green beans, and we're just going to sprinkle those out. And then you got a little veg in there. We're going to have this long side of salad. So we're going to get plenty of vegetables. The mushrooms are so good for you. 100% of your vitamin D. And these green beans are from my garden two years ago. I didn't have to even can green beans last year because I still had so many from the bumper crop from the year before. And I'll even give it a taste test. Mmm. Just like I canned them yesterday, they're delicious. I'll wash that jar up for another canning process. And there you go. Mmm. Rinse my hand, and now the last steps are coming up. So next what I do, and you can leave this out if you're, you don't want to do this, but I think this is going to take it over the top, so I'm not leaving it out. I am putting a layer of cheese, because cheese always makes everything better. That and bacon, and ice cream, and cake, and... sausage and smoked pork butt and no I'm kidding okay so get serious here okay so just a nice little layer maybe oh three-fourths of a cup to a cup of fine grated cheese and we've got our leftover potatoes so you can see I got a lot of potatoes left well, I just had an idea of what I'm going to do with the leftover gravy and these potatoes. So, you want to kind of bring your potatoes close to room temperature. Not necessarily room temperature. Now, you can um, put these on with a pastry bag if you'd like. I'm not going to do that. But I am going to get a fork out because I like to make sure that they get some texture on top that will brown and it makes it easier to get them kind of spread out. And I just want to make sure that the whole top gets some potatoes and I'm, I may not have any leftovers. By the looks of this, I'll have some leftover shepherd's pie but not potatoes by themselves. And this, as you recall, and I'll leave a link um, down below in the comment section or in the, you know, when I talk about the video, I'll leave a link to the video 
uh, when I did the lamb shank so you can see these potatoes that we have beside and uh, soon I'll make these for you we call these sunshine potatoes because they look like sunshine and um, it's a 50 50 blend of potatoes so you're not using all sweet potato but you're not using yeah I'm gonna use them all yay you're not using all sweet potatoes, but you're not using all russets or Yukon gold or whatever you are uh, doing at the time. Okay, so we've got our beautiful potatoes up there. Use that up. And prepping ahead made that easy. I didn't have to make potatoes today. So what I do is just take your fork and this actually works better if the potatoes are a little colder but we're gonna make it happen. And you're just gonna get some texture on top here. I don't know, I kinda go both ways and see what looks like it's got the most in there. And all those little peaks will brown off. We're gonna put this in a 375 degree oven until this top is golden brown and I can see everything bubbling from underneath. And I'll bring you back and show you what that looks okay, like. Okay, so here's the finished product. I've let it rest. You've got a nice crispy little top going on. And sometimes you can get this out um, perfectly and sometimes, you know, you have to sacrifice that first piece. So I'm just taking my fish spatula and going down in here and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the wonderful thing about ooh, our um, shepherd's pie. It does not have to be perfect. So now I, that I've got it kind of moved away, and it looks pretty juicy in there. Sometimes you need to let it set up a little bit, but my husband's So really here we have hungry. our end result, and actually... This reminds me more of a pot pie because I, I cut into it too hot, but that's okay. My husband's gonna love it just the way it is. And I'm gonna get to take a taste of it because I'm doing salad tonight. I'm gonna stay away from, he likes black pepper on everything. And so we're gonna put some cracked black pepper, but you can see the top got nice and crispy. And if you left this sit for 20 minutes, it would be easier to cut out and be in one piece. And I might let the rest of it just sit and then do an end shot of that. I've got a nice um, powerhouse green salad. This has got kale and chard and spinach and a really nice homemade dressing. I've got a homemade Caesar and some organic tomatoes or no, those are greenhouse tomatoes, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to take a bite of the meat and the gravy and all that. And mushrooms. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely delicious. I don't know if I can just have salad tonight now. <laughs> I might have to eat some of his. Mm. Let's get some potatoes. It's such a nice change from, you know, usually you use a ground or a minced meat, and this is just a shredded, pull-apart meat, and it's fabulous. I'm going to tell you, my husband is going to go crazy. He'll probably eat half that casserole, <laughs> but I'll try to get a set-up piece picture for you, and this is so good, so good, and... You know what? These are fun to make. I could have made individual little ramekins, too. Um, that would be a great way to serve your guests. That way you don't have to worry about it spreading out and not being a big, you know, lasagna-type slice or piece. But if this inspires you, I hope that you uh, go check out my Facebook page. Check out all the links that I've left in the About section below my video. And um, hit like if you like this. Leave me a comment. You know, leave me your shepherd's pie recipe because I love recipes. And as always, guys, I can't wait to see you next time. If you're not a subscriber, 
hit that subscribe button and you get notified anytime I upload a video, which is very, very often, about every other day. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. God bless.